Welcome YouTube Live to Gateway Technical College's 2021 Student Design Show. It's a district-wide show featuring the artwork of all the students in Racine, Kenosha, and Walworth County. It's a show that we've kind of started in 1999 and have continued ever since. Not even the COVID pandemic in 2020 could stop us. There's a theme at Gateway that we're resilient, and I hope that you'll find this show entertaining as well as indicating some of that resilience. Tonight, I have the pleasure of welcoming our president and CEO, Dr. Brian Albrecht. Thank you, Peter. Let me just add how proud and excited I am to be here tonight. And I've had a chance to attend a few of these events, and I do miss the face-to-face -face and seeing all of the products and ideas that uh, your students have generated uh, you know, in a real setting, uh, such as, a, such as a, one of our student centers or some exhibit. But tonight is going to be just as exciting. I have all the confidence in the world. I'm so thrilled that you're able to continue to celebrate the design and the work of our students. So congratulations to you and the rest of the faculty members that are here celebrating tonight. And to our students, what an honor for me to be with you tonight to see some of the ideas that you've created and the projects that you've worked so hard on. And we're going to get a chance to celebrate that uh, in just a few minutes. One thing that maybe you don't know about me is I actually taught graphic arts a very long time ago. So I loved it so much. And I remember a lot of the life lessons that I learned when I was a teacher. I don't know if I remember all of the steps of the design process, but I do remember some key elements that I tried to emphasize while my students were going through their design courses. The first one is the idea of making sure that you understand the design process and appreciate, maybe even immerse yourself in the concept that you're trying to create. You almost have to live the experience in order to really be a full designer. And I know that you've done that because you can just measure it by the amount of time and effort that you put into your ideas and your products. And you can see it as a participant. You can observe and see the emotion that comes out of your work. And that's a real credit to a, to a designer. And I think we celebrate all of the really unique aspects of creativity through the work of others. So thank you for doing that. The second element of the design process is really to define the problem, to fully understand what you're trying to accomplish. And I know that in your work, you've really put practical work together and worked with clients to better understand what their expectations were and designed your ideas around their needs. That's a critical element to life success, to really fully understand what your customers are looking for and how you can help fulfill that by immersing yourself in that experience. I remember another key element to the design process and that was the idea of ideization and that you're gonna come up with all kinds of ideas. Sometimes it's called brainstorming or the creative process and whiteboarding, so many different ways you can describe it. Because as you know, and you could probably share better than, than I can, that there's no one right solution that each of you are going to be awarded and recognized tonight, and you probably all deserve a blue ribbon or first place. It's all a matter of perspective from those that are viewing your work. We want you to know that we're proud of every single one of you and the work that you're going to put on exhibit here tonight. A third thing that I remember very closely is the idea of prototyping and testing. And that the first idea, the first um, I, that you come up with, the first idea is probably not the one that you ended up with that you've probably started over, recreated, maybe tweaked it a little bit before you got your final product. And that's an experience that will live with you forever because that's what life's about. It's about immersing yourself in the experience of others and what you wanna gain from that. It's helping fully understand what the expectation is of others and how you can achieve to meet that as an individual. It's about creating lots of solutions and different ideas on how to progress through life. And of course, it's about testing that trying new things, continuing your lifelong learning journey, and being a part of something that's bigger than even the product that you've created. And that's what we hope you've experienced here at Gateway Technical College. So again, I want to congratulate you for participating in tonight's event and for all of the work that you've done while you're a student here at Gateway. It's now my honor to introduce our provost. Zena Haywood is the Executive Vice President and Provost for Gateway. She's been an instrumental leader in helping us shape the vision for our students, not only through great programs like you've studied, but the engagement in the student life component, 
to make you feel a part of the whole design process here at Gateway. So Zena, thank you for joining us tonight and we look forward to your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your comments. Every time I uh, do a welcome or a show like this with you, I learn something new. I never knew you taught graphics, so that, that's awesome. Uh, I wanna welcome everyone again to the 2021 Design Show. We're delighted that you could join us. Uh, you are certainly in for a treat tonight. As a Chief Academic Officer, I'm so proud of our Graphic Communications Program for many reasons. And one of them, the first one I wanna talk about tonight is that a year ago, uh, Peter mentioned this about the uh, virtual program uh, last year. I believe that that program was the first academic program to develop a virtual experience for the end of year student showcase and celebration. Second, I know our students would agree that we have world-class instructors. And third, we have smart, resilient, and of course, talented students. And I'm taking credit for every, all of them. So just so you know that. So thank you all to the family and friends uh, that have joined us for Gateway's 2021 virtual design show. As I do, I know our faculty and students appreciate your support. Thank you to everyone involved in the planning of tonight's program as well. Congratulations to all the students showcases, showcase tonight, and I am proud of you. Enjoy the show, everyone. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Laura Lasnica, one of our instructors. Hi, everyone, I'm Laura Lasnica. <laughs> I am the graphic communications um, division chair, and it is my pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. I would like to introduce to you our host tonight, my design family, Peter Fom, our student design show chair and webmaster. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> then John Miser. Hi, everyone. Glad you could join us. Sue Lacan. Hi, everybody. Congratulations. Michelle Quinn. Hey, everyone. I am so happy you're here tonight and excited for this show. Our associate, Sherry Boo Bell. <laughs> and our Dean, Rodney Reese of Business and Transportation. <laughs> Take it away, Peter. All right. I'm gonna share my screen here and uh, you'll see the screen on, <clears throat> you'll see the screen as I talk, but you will see Kara provide our signing. So here we go. Okay, as we mentioned, I want to welcome everybody to the show. Several years back, we developed a website that really is the foundation for our online design show. And it's nice because it can be accessed well beyond this hour that you're going to be with us tonight. I want to show people also now how they can access this video. So this video will provide an archive of what you see tonight, probably in perpetuity. If you scroll to the design show website, now I'm going to repeat this. It's gtcgraphiccom.org. That's G T C G R A P H I C C O M M. So there's two C's there. gtcgraphiccom.org. You'll see the menu system. And if you click on SDS 2021, watch it live. And I'm not going to click on it because uh, I don't want to loop us here but you will see a link to both the live broadcast as well as our archival uh, Zoom, uh, I should say YouTube footage of this event. So please feel free to view it, to share it with family and friends, to really share it with anybody who might be interested too, potentially in graphic design at all. Uh, we want this to be something that you feel free to come back to. Uh, I also wanna share with you a little bit about how we got to this point. The design program started in 1995 on the Elkhorn campus and shortly followed on the Kenosha and Racine campuses. 
it was around that same time that we realized we all needed to get together as a program to really celebrate the work that we've done in this program. Initially, it was Racine and Kenosha because we we're about 15 minutes apart as a campus. And it was just a few hours long on one day that we all got together, the students from uh, Racine and uh, Kenosha, to go ahead and put together this event. And we said, you know what, this has got to be a district-wide thing. So the following year, it became a district-wide event, which featured not only design in graphic design format, but design in its many other formats on each of the campuses. Eventually, it moved to something that was a design format show for graphic design or graphic com strictly. You can see here some of the previous events. they are festivities that family and friends and actually businesses would come to, as well as high schools and some of the other colleges to kind of check out and discuss some of the work that was there. It rotated between the different campuses. So we'd see it one semester on the Elkhorn campus or one year on the Elkhorn campus. The next year it would be on the Kenosha campus and then it would be on the Racine campus. In 2005, the consolidation of the program in the Eastern region to Kenosha and Racine led to us having it go back and forth between Racine and Kenosha. I mean, between Racine and Elkhorn, excuse me. And you can see here some footage from our most recent venue, which is the SC Johnson IMET Center. Uh, the show is something that's, if you've never been to it, and hopefully one day we can have a live show again, we have live music. We have discussion about the pieces with the students and their families and our invited guests from both the business community and our educational partners out in the community. Uh, there's also a catered buffet. So oftentimes these events are held around mealtime and the food is nothing to sneer at, as you can see. Um, we've pivoted in 2020, as we've mentioned before, because the show had to go on, despite the fact that COVID was happening. And the show then became something that was virtual and with, of extreme importance became our website. It became the focal point, like I said, the cornerstone of this design show. And we want it to continue, no matter what happens in the future, to be that. I'm ready to turn the, the mic over a little bit, uh, but first I also need to discuss something that's very important for people to understand about our show. It is the judging of the show. How do we pick who are the best pieces in the show? Well, first off, I need to tell you that we don't pick. We don't pick the, the pieces in the show. The pieces are actually selected by people from business and industry, as well as some of our educational partners, higher educational partners in the community. And so each year we invite our judges to come and we need to be extremely thankful for these folks. They've been wonderful, uh, consistent judges. And this year's judging roster includes Bo Atkins, Anna Bauer, Lisa Barber, Jean Barrett, Michael Candy, Trace Chioda, Brianna Johnson, Greg Kirstein, Professor Jose Montoto, Javon Pham, Amanda Puckett, Teresa Schiffer, Lori Spickle, Nicole Turner, Chris Uran, and Brianna Wright. Again, we can't thank these people enough. And I feel that it's extremely important for the students to know that this is one of those shows that are judged by people that you will be working with and that will potentially be doing the hiring out in industry. So thanks again goes to all our partners out there that are helping us judge this show. Uh, one last plug to make sure that everybody understands exactly how to get to the site. 
It is off of Gateway site. There are links to it on Gateway site. The site address again, gtcgraphic.com.org, gtcgraphiccomm.org. Thanks much. And with that, I'll turn it over to Laura. Hi, everyone. I would just love to share with you some of the bragging rights we have with our graphic communications program. Peter, if you can go to the landing page of our site, that would be awesome. I'm here to talk to you about the intelligent ranking. We were ranked number two this year through intelligent.com, a trusted resource of online ranking for higher education and planning. So intelligent.com is a, uh, this year they, they ranked us number two out of 50 graphic design degree programs in 2021. It's a comprehensive research guide based on assessment of 188 accredited colleges and universities across the nation, accredited colleges. We are accredited by Higher Learning Commission here at Gateway and we take pride in that. Each program is evaluated and based on curriculum quality, graduation rate, reputation and postgraduate employment. So out of the 188 schools, the scale of zero to 100 gateway this year was ranked number two with an aggregate of 99.15. And we were recognized for best prior learning credits. And some of you might be thinking, what's prior learning credits? Well, because we are a technical college system in a technical college school, we recognize that people out in industry working, we give them credit for coming back to Gateway to earn their degree. So we take pride in that. So it's just something that we would like to highlight tonight. And then one last thing before I move the mic over to someone else is that all of you are prepared. Our graduates are prepared to go out into the workplace. You are ready to go. If you decide to pursue a bachelor degree, we have opportunities in that capacity as well. We have articulation agreements, two plus two, A to Bs, as we call them, with UW Parkside, with Mount Mary College, with Milwaukee Art Institute of Design. And um, recently, we have a new relationship with the Modern College of Design. Uh, this is a great opportunity for students to earn their baccalaureate, um, especially our online program students because they are fully online. So you can bring your credits that you have earned with us at Gateway and go on to a four year at the Modern College of Design. They are actually hosted in, um, their location is in Ohio, but because they offer an online program, no problem. That's what we do best, right? We take care of our students in a face-to-face -face, um, environment. Uh, we are experienced multimodal delivery in every capacity. So that's why we give you such a great experience online as well. So I would like to just uh, move on <laughs> from that um, experience that I just shared with you. And I'm gonna hand over the mic so to speak, to John Miser. Thank you, Laura. Uh, we're going to take a look at the awards for this year. And actually, Peter right now is showing a short little video, which is extremely short. Um, and it's, it is uh, showing us uh, from computer. Uh, the artwork was converted into a grayscale um, version of the artwork and then lasered, as you can see right now, on the device. And here is the finished product. So as you can see, we have best of show and then also the honorable mention. Uh, these will be um, mailed out or possibly it could be a campus pickup could be arranged for the winners. That's pretty cool. I, I like the fact that these are not only made in the USA, but they're made in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. That's right, John. That's it. 
Yeah, we that's part of our collaboration with the Fab Lab. Maybe you could uh, speak a little yeah. bit about that as well. Yeah, so we're very grateful uh, for for both John Zurin and Adam Reed uh, supported us greatly um, each year with the fabricating of the awards. Um, uh, great individuals and provide us with wonder support, wonderful support with um, not only with our awards for the design show, but students have opportunity to print their um, projects. And it's just a fantastic experience um, available to us with the Fab Lab. And, and I believe they're also uh, open to the public. Is that correct? I believe that they are. Yeah. Excellent. I think there's one more really think, cool thing to point out about the awards that although we couldn't include the students in uh, etching the awards this year because of COVID restrictions, in past years we've involved the students with hands-on etching of the awards uh, in the Fab Lab. But John, thank you so much for working with the lab for this year's awards. And if anybody is here from last year's virtual show, which we kind of had to pivot and put together within just a couple of weeks, we didn't have the awards last year. But if you won an award last year, they're printed and they're going to be sent to you. So thank you, John, for doing those awards for two years. Yeah, that's my pleasure. They look awesome. And now we are passing off to... I think, Michelle, we're going to just talk about the development, correct? Yeah. So, it's moi, Michelle. Um, Peter's going to share a screen that shows the all of the branding entries that um, were created by our students up for consideration for the promotion of this spring show. I want to tell you just a little bit about that process. So, the planning of our show literally begin soon after we wrap up each show each spring. It's a year long process. There are so many details. So each fall we begin to engage our students in the process by putting each one of them to task to conduct research, development and discussion about our past shows and the future show that they will be participating in because it's gonna be their graduate show. Students then use our process to ideate, create, and refine their submissions, just like Brian was so eloquently explaining, um, for what they feel is the brand that would best promote our student design show. Every single one of these concepts has to be scalable. So when our judges take a look at these designs, they have to envision how well is this going to translate to posters, postcards, digital banners, social TV, web, t-shirts, awards, and much, much more. Concepts are collected and organized for judging by not only our external partners, judges such as the judges that judge the show's um, entries, but we also have our internal dignitary dignitaries, Brian, Zena, Rodney, thank you for participating in so many aspects of our student design show. So this year, I am so proud to announce Braden Blickerts is our winner. You've been seeing his promotion in our backgrounds and on the website. Braden's work has been deployed and actively engaged with an audience for the past couple of months now. So please join us, the instructors and the staff and the admin and everybody that's online by congrats. Please join us in congratulating Braden by just putting a little note in the chat if you're on YouTube live. Um, he did a great job. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, promotion. And I think our judges made such a wonderful choice. I think it's a hard choice to make though. You saw all of the different submissions and so many are just phenomenal. So Braden's gonna receive a best of show acrylic award for this success. And if you would like more information, we have more information for you on our website. So congratulations, Braden. Congratulations, Braden. And those of you that are on campus probably see them on the, um, the large monitors as well. Uh, normally we print out posters and these posters are at some local places like libraries and uh, different public places that will display the information about our show. But again, 
with this show being virtual, the importance of those virtual promotions, things that fit into Facebook, things that fit into Instagram, uh, really amplified for our students. It's a, it's a great learning experience. I think we're going to continue on, right, Michelle? We're going to talk about the student award winners now? Absolutely. It is time. We need a drum it roll. It is time. <laughs> This is the part that everybody, when we're, we're together, face-to-face um, -to -face in the traditional format, everybody's waiting for this moment. And I'm, I'm feeling it this year too, even though we're doing this virtually. Um, our students work so hard over the course of their four semesters. And each spring, they get a chance to enter their best work in the show to be judged in order to see whose work will be selected for best of show an honorable mention. So without further ado, let's go to the location of our website where we have all of the categories and we have the winners displayed. Um, you can also see the other student entries, by the way, and I encourage you to go through and see all of the fabulous work done by the students. Let's start tonight with the comprehensive campaign, shall we? So here are the comprehensive campaign entries. Let's get right to it. Best of show goes to Chelsea Wolf for her trade wind soap campaign. So quite often the comprehensive campaign will start with creating an identity, a look and a feel for a packaging project that the student will then scale to multiple deliverables in many different formats and modes. So here you can see some display work, some traditional print magazine work, the packaging work. We have a point of purchase countertop display and of course the logo and the beautiful packaging. Congratulations, Chelsea, on a job well done. Chelsea has a very important distinction too. Am I right, Michelle? Well, she does and all of our students do, but I think this one is worth um, a little extra mention since we were just talking about achieving the um, number two um, intelligence award. Uh, Chelsea is a 100% true online student. She's never stepped foot on campus and she lives the furthest away this year. Chelsea's in Hawaii. And I, I didn't see in the chat if Chelsea was joining us. You know, there's that five hour time difference. So maybe she might have to be at work. But um, yeah, all of our students have cool stories. And um, that's part of the cool story behind Chelsea Wolf. Yeah, we kind of, uh, as instructors, we, we try and see who's the furthest student away. And I think Chelsea pretty much took the trophy this year. So aloha, she Chelsea. She did. And I think this is also a family business. Yeah. All right, honorable mention, Megan Burns. I did see Megan is with us tonight. So congratulations, Megan, for your Yogi Tea um, comprehensive campaign. And again, you can look in the upper center at the initial packaging. What a cool packaging. It looks like it deploys in a really fun manner. And the scalability to the outdoor, the floor point of purchase, as well as that print magazine. Here's a fun fact. One of the things that's really helpful for our students to gain employment is that when they create print advertising, such as the one you see in the upper right hand corner, they also have to pre-press those files so that they can be properly produced. So when they go out for their interviews and, and a potential employer starts to engage them in a dialogue, they know exactly what they're talking about and they can show them how they organize and pre-press their files. So congratulations, Chelsea, best of show, Megan, honorable mention. And folks, those of you following along on YouTube, if you uh, want to go ahead and give congratulations to your classmates or maybe to your relatives or your friends and family, uh, that'll enter up along the right side, you'll notice in the YouTube live uh, sort of column that you can give everybody some, uh, you know, attaboys out there. Absolutely. Let's move on, digital illustration. Oh, well. Megan, I hope you didn't log off yet because Megan Burns is up for best of show. Be the change. Megan, I, I had Megan in the Applied Exit Strategies online class and I, I commented that this was my favorite piece in, her, in um, her portfolio and here it is, best of show. And I just wanna note that instructors do not participate in judging. It's external um, industry professionals. 
but it's kind of fun when you pick somebody's favorite and that's the one that comes through as best of show. So congratulations, Megan. Honorable mention, oh, she's here tonight too, Samantha Hanneman for her self-love illustration set. So these are four separate pieces being displayed as a set that Samantha has created um, as digital illustrations. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I think, Samantha, I also pointed out to you that this was my one of my top picks in your portfolio. So um, fun to see, very well done. Congratulations. Our next category is the layout category, everyone. Our best of show in the layout category goes to Brittany Brown for her Christmas magazine. So in the advanced design and publishing class, we prepare our students for much more complex projects such as a magazine. You can imagine maybe in a first year course doing a postcard or maybe something is like a brochure, but to be able to design and to um, pick out all the different assets for an entire magazine is quite the undertaking. And um, Brittany Brown, you did it well, and the judges have picked you as best of show. I also want to point out real quickly to the viewing crowd out there, if you go back to our website, in many of these uh, pages, you'll notice there's a little magnifying glass when you click on the artwork. If you'd like to see them in more detail, you can click on them, and then you can kind of zoom in a little bit to see the spreads as well. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Still in the layout category, we have to give our honorable mention out to Chad Metzger. Chad, congratulations on getting the award, honorable mention award for Skateboard Magazine. So I had Chad in class and I have to tell you, Chad is a skateboarder and a few of his projects did revolve around this genre. But here's something that makes this even more unique and gives us more reason to celebrate. He also did all the photography in this magazine and all the digital illustration. So that's the trifecta. The only thing he didn't do is write the copy. I guess he'd have to connect with Rick to, you know, to master that part too, but um, congratulations, Chad. Honorable mention, it's a beautiful layout. All right, multimedia and web. Multimedia and web um, were combined this year into a shared category. So our best of show, Oops, did I jump ahead, Peter? We're a little bit ahead, yeah, that's okay. okay. Well, 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 here's, well, why don't we step back a little bit and we can go ahead with the logos and identity. Yeah, we should, because I know that Samantha Hanneman's still here and she has best of show for her Zuno fruit tea in logos and identity. Congratulations, Samantha. What a vibrant, beautiful piece. I love how you were able to scale your logo and the identity to multiple items such as packaging and promotional items. Great job. We have a shared um, honorable mention in this category. So this is shared with Megan Burns for her Starly Creative Campaign, which started by creating the logo and then again, scaling it to all of the pieces that you see. And she shares this with Brennan Diedrich. Brennan, you have honorable mention for your Hickory Home Repair. Hickory Home Repair, this is a real life project that we did in the classroom. All of the students in graphic design professional practices had an opportunity to design logos for a fellow instructor um, and her husband. They have separate businesses. So Courtney Gree, who works in horticulture, got a logo for her horticulture business and her husband, Ben Grieve, has this logo now to promote his home repair business. Congratulations, Brennan Diedrich on Hickory Home Repair. All right, so here's the multimedia and web. Shared category and the best of show this year goes to Melody Warner for her Butterbox Bakery website. Now I understand that the Butterbox Bakery is a real business of Melody's and it's in the Milwaukee area. I'm in Milwaukee and I just learned this today. So I didn't have time to run and get anything from the bakery, but you can bet I'm going to be doing that because this stuff looks absolutely delicious. Amazing. I got to tell you too, I, I've had her in class and uh, 
Her prices are amazing. So I know I'm going to be buying dozens and dozens of cupcakes. Yeah, I'm soon, like this <laughs> week. <laughs> so congratulations, Melody Warner. Honorable mention Oops. goes to Roman Morawski for the search. And this is an eight minute video, you guys. So we don't have quite enough time to run all eight minutes, but please go to the website and go to the multimedia and web category and watch the video that won best of show, uh, honorable mention, correct, uh, correction there, honorable mention in the multimedia and web category. Congratulations, Roman. All right, let's shift to packaging in 3D. Here we have best of show for Yum Earth Packaging going to Brittany Brown. Congratulations, Brittany, on a beautiful design on your packaging. Honorable mention goes to Samantha Hanneman. Samantha designed this beautiful Puppy Paws coffee brand packaging. It is absolutely amazing. And for special effects, you might even hear my dogs barking in the background. <laughs> They deserve a raise. <laughs> no, they, they want those uh, treats in there. They know what's happening. Five more treats per day. <laughs> so photography is always our largest category and we have sectioned it off into three different subcategories. The first category is photography that's straight out of the camera. Straight out of the camera is how it lands, which means you have to be a fantastic technician to capture the photo. So our best of show goes to Chelsea Wolf, and this is her San Pellegrino on the beach product shot. I wonder which beach this is. Which, I, I'm not sure which island, but I kind of have the vibe there with the shot that she took and the beautiful lighting. Congratulations, Chelsea, on best of show. Honorable mention, photography straight from the camera, goes to Teresa Goshaw for her photo titled Anxiety. Look at the beautiful reflections. There's a lot of depth in these photos to read into. In our second subcategory, photography with minimal post enhancement, we have best of show this year going to, I hope you're still listening, Teresa, because you have best of show in the minimal post in the, um, with your image called Stand Up. And where is this, Peter? Kenosha residents, everybody probably recognizes this. It's that iconic red lighthouse. So yeah. beautiful job. It Teresa. is. Congratulations. But the waves sort of cracking there and the enhancement. Uh, I want to emphasize that this category is a tricky one because it's very easy to over process photos. Uh, the processing is pretty natural in a lot of the ones that we're looking at. So it doesn't look, um, you know, sometimes you'll see an over processed sky and it's a tricky Tricky thing for these folks that won awards to really get the right balance of straight out of camera and uh, amount of enhancement done in post. I agree. Okay, honorable mention. Christy, I sure hope that you're with us on YouTube Live um, because I wanna congratulate you for your beautiful fruit splash image. You have honorable mention with minimal post enhancement. What a fantastic display of color. And these things are fun, but they're not easy, you guys. There's a lot in the setup and the technique to be able to achieve these shots. Great job, Christy. Congratulations, Christy. Our third subcategory in photography is true photo manipulation. And this is where you're engaging with Photoshop and or Lightroom and you might be doing quite a bit of editing to the photo, and maybe you're combining multiple images. Our best of show goes to Roxanne Faulkner. Roxanne, are you on tonight? I, I didn't get a chance to see in the chat. I caught some of you, but um, I hope you're here. Can you guys get a load of this, the amount of detail in the image? It is phenomenal. You can just continue to look in and in and in and discover more things in this image. Chinatown crowds, best of show. Honorable mention goes to Micah Fiocchi for Lady with Ladybird. 
And I'm, I'm going to guess that this was the, <laughs> the combining of several images <laughs> by the scale of the bird. Absolutely. Yes. It's, this is uh, from the 107 class. So a really, a really wonderful job by uh, Mike on this one too. 107 being an intro class, right? Intro level class. That's right. Yeah. Very good. Fantastic. Congratulations. Two categories left, you guys. So let's move into the poster design category. Poster design is really fun because this could be any of our primary pieces of software, such as Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, InDesign. Students are creating their own illustrations digitally or traditionally and using their own um, original photography. So this year, best of show and poster de design goes to Milo Kuhn for the Alone poster, which I think has a lot of impact. And that's what our students learn to do best, not just work with the layout and design, but they have to understand what is the mood and reception for the audience in viewing the piece and does it relate to the subject matter? And I think this completely is um, totally effective in achieving all of those objectives. Congratulations, Milo. Nice job, Milo. I mean, a very communicative piece. The, the, the co communication aspect of graphic communications is heavy. And this really does, like you said, a wonderful job. It does. All right, honorable mention. Has anybody ever been to the Racine Art Museum peep show? This is a real show, you guys. If you haven't gone, you should. And I, I've caught it on the news. Um, it's an art show of um, art projects and sculptures made out of peeps. So this is Andrea Mickelson's peeps poster her concept to promote the show, and I think they should use it. So <laughs> congratulations, Andrea. Nice job. All right, last category, you guys. We'll go back to our roots. This is where we all start in the beginning with art, traditional media illustration. Get out the colored pencils, the crayons, the crepas, the paints, all of the different medias that you've worked with, or maybe you're gonna use multiple um, medias. This year, we have a best of show going to Brennan Diedrich for his original illustration, Silent Eyes. An honorable mention this year goes to Chelsea Wolf for her Sweater Kitty clay model. I do believe this is part of a larger project in which the students have to do an extensive process of coming up with a concept for a toy which involves a lot of traditional sketches and development, clay modeling. Um, I don't teach that class, but I've seen the work. And this would be, I'm not sure if this is, this looks like the 3D printed model, is it? No, this is actually the clay. Uh, wow, the clay, clay model is very good. It is definitely the clay model. And from the clay model, they they do a 3D rendering and then a 3D prototype that traditionally we would go to the fab lab to do, <laughs> but with COVID um, that we have a bunch of files that we're, John Meisner and I will probably be out to the fab lab doing some of these prototypes, but yes, absolutely, Michelle, you're dead on. This is a, a clay model of a prototype um, of a 3D model for um, a character and uh, vinyl um, character design. It's fantastic. And, and I believe we started with Chelsea and we ended with Chelsea we, and she we is brought from, it full circle, you guys. Isn't she is it from cool Hawaii. how things always work out? And, aloha. Uh, aloha, <laughs> aloha means hello and goodbye, so aloha. So one of the really cool things that we get to do in the classroom, if we are able to um, have enough lead time and if the subject matter is going to work well within the construct of our courses, we do a lot of real world projects with real clients and they're internal and external. So Laura's going to talk to you very briefly about one of the uh, real projects that we do for Gateway Technical College. Laura? Thanks, Peter. I know you're getting to the layout category. Going back to the layout here, yep. <laughs> I would love to present to you 
our student handbook design for next year, 2021-2022. And uh, I am proudly love to present uh, a little acknowledgement to Samuel Hansen. Hopefully you're out there this evening, Samuel. Um, this is a, a project that I do in computer illustration and drawing, which is a first semester course. Again, you know, bringing that real life experience into the classroom as soon as we possibly can. It doesn't matter what semester you are uh, taking a course with us, first, second, third, fourth semester, capstone course, we bring that real life um, experience to you. And uh, the student handbook is a great way to get involved with creating a portfolio piece and then being able to, to put that um, out to the community and to the students. And it's, it's a really fun project for me because we have a built-in marketing research audience, right? The students all collaborate and they talk about would you like to see that in the front of the cover of the student handbook? Yes, no. So the feedback sessions are really interesting in this project. So congratulations, Samuel Hansen. Samuel, by the way, uh, just an interesting fact, I know he's a concert pianist as well, um, is coming to Gateway and has shared some of his music with his classmates. And uh, it's an amazing, uh, amazing work. So very talented individual. I believe we will be going to John Miser to showcase our student exit strategy students and graduates. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, we are going to take a look at an example here, which happens to be Samantha Hanneman. Um, and we're going to take a look at her uh, development of her branding. This is the uh, finalize branding uh, for Samantha. And you can see how she took the look and applied it to a variety of applications. So we can see um, her senior poster in the center, off to the right resume um, on the left side, uh, her business card. And so this is all part of the branding procedure is to apply the look to many different applications, so, uh, social media, uh, Behance, and uh, yeah. so this, well, go ahead. Yeah, and if you take a look, if you go into the link, LinkedIn and look up Samantha, you'll see her banner reflects her branding and her social media reflects the branding, her Behance, you know, so they, they not only design it, but they have to deploy it in that class to all of those different outlets. Well done, Samantha. Yeah, I mean, and this is pretty interesting too. John, tell us a little bit about the selection process. They don't necessarily uh, put everything in their portfolio. They, they go through a, an introspection process, right? Right, each student works with the instructor and we review um, potential projects uh, that could be used in a portfolio. So there's a number of portfolios. We have a PDF portfolio, of course, the online Behance portfolio, and then also um, when things kind of straighten out with uh, COVID, uh, perhaps we'll go back to the actual uh, case portfolio, the book portfolio. There's extensive planning in the entire semester is dedicated towards this process in order to create those portfolios. And as you said, this year it's the digital, the Behance and or their Adobe portfolio websites and individual websites. What are these little post-it notes, do you guys? Maybe talk a little bit about these. These are kind of interesting. Yeah, what's fun is we use the G Suite, the Google Suite at Gateway Technical College, and it's really important to prepare our students for those tools also in the workplace. So we use Google Docs as shared documents and living documents. That's what the Jamboard is. It's a living document. Everybody can log on during class. Um, virtual. You can see a couple of people, little bubbles at the top. I see Brittany Brown and Laura must be logged into their their, their Google because when the whole class logs in, you can see everybody's little bubble at the top. And we start putting post-it notes um, during live class time, or maybe if a student's done some development, they can send out an email request to their peers and say, hey, what do you think? Everybody logs in and starts putting comments with post-it notes to help you refine your work. 
It's really and a simple tool, but it's worked really well for us um, for the development process. Now, now, some of you out there viewing and some of the instructors may remember a time where we did something quite similar. We put work physically on a board, right? And we'd uh, tack comments to it. This is a digital version of it. Like, like Michelle said, it's very, very simple. It allows feedback um, almost instantaneously. And, and boy, oh boy, you know, what a neat tool. What a simple and neat tool for our students. Well, and I'm grateful to Gateway Technical College for having such a wonderful system that we're able to scale to all of these different um, models with, you know, the, the Google Docs, the Living Docs, and the Jamboards. And this wasn't part of that suite. And I uh, talked to Meg Hunter and uh, she worked it out and made it happen for us. It's, it's been a lifesaver during COVID to be able to do critiques. Good job, you guys. I, I think uh, the, the thing I find very interesting about this is the feeling of brand that's developed when you look at it, uh, that there is, there's an established brand inside the student's work uh, that they're putting together and, and really kind of communicating that with their portfolio as best they can. I think this is a perfect time to segue to taking a look at all 34 of our soon to be graduates and what their individual banners look like, how they branded themselves. John, do you wanna have the honors of um, reading through the list of our graduates so we can- Absolutely, them? absolutely. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, commend uh, the students for um, putting the hard work into these posters, which is no easy task. So we'll go ahead and start going through these. Brayden Blickerts, Brittany Brown, Selena Blusher, Megan Burns, Brennan Diedrich, Roxanne Faulkner, Samantha Hanneman, Matthew Bartelson, Christy Loesch, Ben Lauterman, Abigail Maurer, Chad Metzniger, Tiffany Mosenson, Mosenson, if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry, Ashton Navarro, Austin Navarro, Hunter O'Loughlin, Ashley Palasso, Paula Marie Powell, Alina Rasmussen, Julie Schroeder, Sasha Shelton, Shelty Wolf, Paige Hood, Dustin Kruger, Heather Hazlitt, Yuri Ramirez, Nathaniel Zimmerman, Devin Hirschfield, Roman Morosky, Teresa Sarpong, Adam Napi, Jessica Lambin, Jordan Scholander, and lastly, number 34, Elizabeth Loberg. And folks, those are in no particular order, not alphabetical order clearly, but boy, oh boy, what a neat showing of portfolios. Really nice work. I wanna point out too, to our viewing audience that uh, if they click on the body of the poster, they can see the senior poster uh, sort of zoomed in and up close. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, but by clicking on the magnifying glass, you can zoom in as well. And then if you click on the name that's beneath it, right down here, you'll be taken to their um, Behance portfolio page, right? Uh, John, could you tell us a little bit about the Behance portfolio page? Yes, so Behance is our online portfolio. Um, and then students will 
if they have a business card, they would put the link onto their business card. So it's just a wonderful opportunity to, to showcase the student's work online. Um, the Behance has a very nice environment uh, in order to display their work. Yeah, and I want to I want to add that a Behance, while it's not necessarily a, a primary facet, it is a marketplace. You'll see in the upper left the contact information for the designer. They can be contacted by people over potential projects that they might want to work on with the designer. They've got sort of um, I don't know I guess I'd call these badges or badging for the different types of uh, Adobe products really that were used since Adobe sponsors Behance. They can put in uh, a brief message to potential clients and people can actually follow them. They can click to follow them. So classmates will often follow each other and uh, you know even potentially businesses can start to follow individual students that they may have an interest in. Is there anything else that I forgot, Michelle? I think that was a really great overview. Um, and a lot of students do add additional links to their social media, their Facebook, Instagram, TikToks, their websites. You know, th there's a lot of different resources out there. And um, our students are really savvy at adapting their materials and keeping up with the deployment of their work and how current they are with everything in the industry. So, um, Great job doing an overview with that. Go in, please, please go in and take a look at these portfolios, you guys. They're, I, I have the privilege of working with these graduates in Applied Exit Strategies. And um, I think, John, you had one group, and I think I had three classes worth of students. Um, right. The fall group, the online group, and then the spring um, group. And... It, it's so exciting to see what they accomplish. It, this is only in four semesters, you guys. Think about coming in raw, not knowing anything about graphic design. Many of our students don't know anything about the software, and this is their product when they walk out. It, it's just amazing to me. I'm so proud of everyone. Good job, everyone. Very proud of everyone. Okay, I think from here, Laura's gonna give a quick intro for... For our musical entertainment tonight, Scott Huffman, who, by the way, is a graduate and alumni of our graphic communications program. Just to show you that the talents of a graphic designer <laughs> is ever... Um, moving and, and evolving. And we have so many students that come into our program area and they are true artists and true talents. And definitely Scott is one of those true talents with his music as a professional um, per, uh, musician. And he is definitely uh, a one man band that you will truly enjoy tonight. So thank you, Scott, for joining us and being our entertainment. You're welcome, and that's uh, quite a lot to live up to. Uh, hopefully I do it. Um, I just wanna preface real quick by saying congratulations to everybody. Um, I know what it's like. I never ended up winning anything, but that's fine. I love being there and learned a lot. Um, the song I'm gonna play for you is Ziggy Marley's version of Drive by the Cars. And if you hear some background vocals, my four-year-old son's running around somewhere, so.
can't go on thinking nothing's wrong but try who's gonna drive you home tonight guys so much if you like what you heard sorry to un unmute my computer because i can't hear anybody else but if you like what you heard you can find me saturday this saturday playing with the band the leftovers at studio winery in lake geneva five to nine everybody in the live chat wants you to know they were all dancing <laughs> nice nice thank you scott so much thank you that was awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Sorry, I turned my camera off. Rodney, will you be our closer for tonight? Absolutely. Thank you, Laura. Uh, just want to check to make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can All right. You? Thank you. With the technical difficulties earlier checking in, I wanted to make sure I was still on here. <laughs> Uh, but I'd like to thank all the students for their hard work and effort over the last two years in your program. Uh, Y'all have put on a great show, a great display of hard work that you guys have put forth uh, over the last two years, and it has definitely shown through tonight. Also, thank you, Scott, for that great music, uh, great song, great guitar playing, good singing. Thank you. Um, but once again, I'd like to thank all the graphic students for this evening. Uh, their families, friends, uh, definitely a uh, big shout out to our faculty that have made this possible for the students to learn uh, what they've shown tonight. And it's shown through really well. So thank you, faculty. Thank you for our judges for taking the time and effort to participate and judge in all of the artwork that has been put forth during this show, because it was quite extensive. Uh, and it was definitely enjoyable to look at all that has transpired over your last two years from beginning to end. Uh, so all of that come out really good tonight. And I, I thank you again for participating as a student at Gateway Technical College. I would also like to thank Dr. Albrecht and Zena for their continued support for our students, our faculty, our staff, and our programs. Without those two at the ham, I don't know where we would be, but I'm glad to be part of Gateway Technical College. I'm proud as your dean to have had you as students, and I'm definitely proud of the faculty that run this program because what they have done for you guys over the last two years definitely shine through tonight. So thank you all. I appreciate y'all attending tonight, and I truly appreciate all the hard work and effort that you have put forward as a student and for your careers as you move forward from graduating from Gateway Technical College. So thank you. Thank you, students. We love you. Thanks, <laughs> Big students. virtual hug. Love you guys. Yep. Thanks, students. Thanks, administrators. Thank you, judges. Thank you, tech support, especially Eric and Jim, our marketing specialist as well. Thank you, Kristen, for helping us get this uh, inaugural YouTube Live going. I want to thank everybody that's been a part of it. Um, and remember, folks, tune in. 
This is going to be on YouTube in perpetuity. So if grandma or grandpa or somebody didn't catch it tonight, they'll still be able to watch it uh, on YouTube. Just navigate to the Gateway Technical College uh, YouTube account, and then you'll be able to view it there. Is there anything else we need to say? Yes. Well, and Brian, now that I know you taught graphic design, <laughs> if I ever need to adjunct. in the classroom, yeah. I would be, be thrilled. <laughs> I would be absolutely thrilled and honored to come and meet some of your students and talk through some of the projects that they're working on. This was absolutely beautiful. I, you've always had some really great shows, but I'm telling you, this class took it up another notch. Every one of those projects you showed us deserve all kinds of recognition. This group is going to go off and do great things in our community. And uh, I know you're all very proud. I just want you to know how proud I am of all, all of the faculty and all of the staff that help support uh, the students, because I think you might have another whole category next year, uh, media graphics, because what you put together tonight is quite an example of how we can showcase our students' work. Congratulations. Thank you, Brian. All right. Peter, are we concluding? We are concluded. That wraps up the 2021 version of the Student Design Show. I want to thank everybody who participated in YouTube Live. I want to thank all the folks that gave uh, you know, wonderful comments to the faculty, to the students, to the students in their lives, to some of their classmates. I, I really think that that's wonderful too, the sort of peer support that we can kind of see on the YouTube uh, commentary that's uh, floating up along the right side, that people are saying congratulations to each other. Uh, it's been a wonderful night and we are now officially done. Have a great summer. Some of you might be seeing during the summer. Have a great fall. And don't forget to sign up for classes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. We appreciate you. We love, love. you.